Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Ain't no thing like me, Seth Lee. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. The map's coming. Oh, no. When do we start? Hey, welcome back to the show. I like what you've done with the place. Yeah, we're a little bit fancier than last time. A little <laughs> little less homemade. It, I mean, it's still very homemade. Let's not kid ourselves. Well, there's a difference. Homemade by a four-year-old and, you know, a halfway competent adult. That's nice the difference here. Uh, listen, you're giving yourself a lot of credit for being halfway competent. <laughs> I would say, like, marginally competent. Yeah, I mean, I've done the first half of kind of doing some re-sound proofing, which looks a lot nicer. We had a wall that I uh, just hobbled together as a temporary solution. That was two years ago. <laughs> Remember the time that you made the box and put the microphone inside the box? That was one one of many different setups. Variations, yeah. Hey, it's gotten, everyone is a little bit better. It's just not bad. I mean, we're going to need to like extend it this way a little bit, I, I feel, but it's... You'll bounce there, I'll bounce there. I'm pointing at things no one can see. Bounce with it, baby. Bounce with it. Is that a good... It sounds like something that Lil Wayne would say. <laughs> next week, the sound will be even a little bit better when I get more foam in to cover this. But yeah. <laughs> Why don't you Our just take thing... the foam off the back wall over here? Because we still need that. It's not really doing anything, though. Like, we're not projecting in that direction. It's supposed to have it behind and in front. I understand this. It's behind. It's not really anything in front of me, though. I'm bouncing off the bare... That's your fault. I'm bouncing off this well, I d- properly. I want to make eye contact with you when I talk to you. <laughs> I'm having polite conversation. Uh, if this is... Yeah. If this is your first time of the show, we have time codes down below if you want to jump around for what we're going to talk about. But yeah, our last one was cardboard with some masking tape held up by some other cardboard and a masking tape. And I had some finishing nails all running through the cardboard that I put little masking tape nubs on the end so no one would get stabbed by them if they were walking through. It was, it was real. like it fell on you. It was, like, it was a booby trap. Oh, it was nasty. I can't believe I had that for that long. It was like if anyone ever came into the house, it was like an embarrassment. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this looks decent. It's not bad. I like it. Nice and crisp. You should get some sponsor stickers on it or something. Well, I like the sleek black. Well, it's not going to be sleek black when you put the foam on it. No, but the back will be. Yeah, I mean, you got that. You should like have some sort of design on it, like Editor's Note Podcast, and, and then a- other show underneath it. But, yeah, oh, before we get into the news, I got a bone to pick. With me? No. Oh, okay. With a certain type of customer. Do you have an axe to grind? <laughs> a little bit. Okay. This isn't directed at anyone, because this shockingly happens all the time. I feel like it's directed not towards a specific person, but to a group of people. A lot of people. I don't know how many of them listen to the show. Probably Uh, none. Well, we'll find out next week if sales go down and people don't come to your store. So if you've ever been to my store, you haven't. Before you go in, there's a hallway with a nice big mat there that you can just wipe your feet right on. It's massive. It covers most of the hall. I feel like this is more than just like a customer pet peeve. This is a human being pet peeve. They just happen to be customers. Wipe your feet. Is this where this is going? Where to wipe your feet is more specifically, because there's this nice big old mat right in front of the counter. There's another big old mat. What people do is they walk in the store, and to not tread dirt around, they just wipe their feet on the carpet. What are you doing? They're trying not to tread dirt around. By wiping it on the carpet instead of on the mat. Aren't they serving the same purpose? Is the carpet tying the room together? The carpet that's in this, like, that's the floor. Do you just wipe your feet on carpet versus an area designated for wiping your feet? Oh, it's, oh yeah, that's right, because it's not like a wooden floor in your... It's no, a... it's half carpet, and then there's a laminate in, yeah. in the second half. The weirder people are the people who walk to the edge of the carpet before the laminate go like, oh, like they don't want to get anything on the laminate, and then rub their feet into the carpet there. Are you saying you need a little mini vacuum for the store? The laminate's so much easier to clean. That I rug... sweep it, I mop it. The rug, it's like, that gets in there. The rug really ties the room together, though, right? No, it's not that. Oh, uh, you're missing the... I know what it is. Okay. But I just watch people do it all the time. I'm like, oh my, who just wipes their feet into a carpet? I mean, people try not to get anything on the laminate. By rubbing their feet into a carpet. That's insane. Stop doing that. I have to put up a sign. It's like, it's like please wipe your feet on the mat instead of the carpet. I think you let it roll for a little bit. Oh, no. I've been putting up with this for years, and I'm speaking out against it. This is insane, people. I guess so. What are you doing? What human does this? Many, actually, but still. I think that their hearts are in the right place, though. I think maybe you put another mat right in front of your door. I can't. Why not? Because then I just have too many mats. There's a mat in front of the counter, which has to be there because it's covering a massive ink spill from, I'm guessing, when it was a tattoo parlor. Why I don't want to just have a no, series no, of mats. No, like in front of the door in the hallway. There is one. It's massive. Maybe you just put a polite sign, due to 
Insane people. Sidewalk conditions, please wipe your feet. On the mat, not on, on the carpet. Yes. What are you going to do when it's like, do you, so like I know in Hollowell, like store owners have to shovel in front of the store. Do you and, and the guy next door rotate who does that? Or do We're you? Not, no, landlords are supposed to do it. Oh, does your landlord do a good job of it? Meh, I, I end up doing it half the time. Okay. I was just wondering. I was curious about that. Landlords are supposed to do it. Because you can it. tell what businesses aren't open in downtown Hollowell because it'd be like sidewalk, snowbank, sidewalk. No, it's one. It's like, well, I could wait for him to do it, or if you know, if I want people to be able to walk in, I just take care of it if it hasn't been done. Well, it's not that like a, deal. you don't really have a whole lot that you have to shovel. No, you will this week. It's supposed to snow again this yeah. week. But that, <laughs> that's my thing. For the love of God, wipe your feet on the mat. That seems like it's not. No, you're not asking a whole lot. Yeah, you you think people wouldn't just rub feet into carpets? But that's that shocking number of people do this. It's that time of year, man. It's that time of year. All right, from there, now that I've... It's not even a soapbox moment. It's just me imploring basic humanity. We're moving on to the news. Unless you have something to say. No, not really. All right, the news. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Hey, this is a surprise to no one. What? What? Punisher and Jessica Jones have been canceled from Netflix. Shocking. I'd, if you had this weekend in the pool, you were you won. That's a little bit surprising that they can Jessica Jones before season three even airs. I bet they're going to push the marketing hard on that one. Nah. No. No one, no one was surprised by this. It was, you know, writing was on the wall. Oh, yeah, it was it was inevitable. It, I mean, it is what it is. A lot of people were complaining, like, it's dad, blah, 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 blah. I mean, yeah, it's a bummer, but at the same time, between all these shows, that was 13 seasons of television that we got. That ain't bad. No, that's a good run. 13 it's seasons. Not like, it's not like you're not going to get more. It's just Marvel's shifting their properties to a different location. And Netflix made mad money on it. So Yeah, because they're pulling their stuff. Captain Marvel is going to be the first Disney movie not released on Netflix. Yeah, because it's going on the Disney streaming yeah. service, whatever it is. Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah, it's a bummer, but at the same time, I mean, it's not all of a bummer. Defenders and Iron Fist were no good. No, I mean... But I don't think that's the it's the end of Netflix producing and making these shows. I think when Disney Plus comes out, we might see different iterations of the show. Or it's to be expected where they're creating their own service. You don't want to like it's like if I own an Italian restaurant and you own an Italian restaurant and I bought your Italian restaurant. I'm not going to leave your Italian restaurant open. I want you to come to mine. It was a weird analogy. That's the best I could come up with. I'm sorry. <laughs> with all of your restaurant business acumen. I, I know a thing or two about restaurants. I eat there frequently. I guess speaking of that, because there was a, we literally didn't talk about the biggest story last week. That's my fault. I just skipped it over in my notes. Speaking of other streaming services, Marvel has announced four adult-themed animated shows on Hulu. Ooh. Going to get Dazzler and Tigra. Chelsea Handler is one of the people going to be working behind that show. Modoc. Patton Oswalt is one of the people behind it. Look up Modoc. Just look him up. If there's any character I want to see in live action, it is Modoc. M O D O C. K. K. Okay, is it K? Is it the K silent? Modoc. Oh wow! Whoa! Weird. <laughs> yeah, he's getting a show. Hits Monkey is getting a show. Uh, what the? F you don't need to show me Modoc. I know what he looks like. He's disturbing. <laughs> That's all I want to see in live action. He's a big head and tiny arms. And Howard the Duck is getting a show. Yes. With Kevin Smith as one of the people developing it. I love it. Yeah, we'll see. I guess. I mean, Howard the Duck's fun. And then all four shows are co combined into a crossover event called The Offenders. Ha 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 ha. Because Netflix did it with The Defenders. Ah. Why would Disney do this if they have their own streaming service, you ask? Why? I don't know. One, I mean, having the more adult theme, I can see wanting to do that on a different service. But once this Fox acquisition goes through, Disney is going to be the primary shareholder in Hulu. Right ah. now, they, they already have 30%, and Fox has 30%. So they'll have a 60%... Share yes, Hulu. There we go. Wow. Words, man. So, I mean, Disney basically has a second streaming service now. Disney owns the internet. Yeah, apparently. Disney owns everyone. I don't have a segue, so I'm just going to say a thing. Do you like Ghostbusters? I love Ghostbusters. Do you like Transformers? I do. I'm I'm less excited on that second front. Oh. I mean, I'm like super. I watched the cartoon as a kid. Not even that much. Ah. But if you liked those two things and mash them together, get ready, because the Ecto-1 is becoming a Transformer. Okay, I don't think I like them now. <laughs> Both in toy form, it's going to be a toy, and a five-part comic book series that IDW is going to put out. Interesting. And the name of this Transformer, want to take a stab in the dark? Slimer? No. Ecto-2? So close. Ecto-1. 
or just the name of it already, Ectotron. Interesting. <laughs> it's going to be a toy. The photo of that is out. I guess pre-order that comic book series with me. Not much to say on that one. It's just weird. Yeah. I guess. I mean, if those are like your two favorite things in the world, mash them together. If you love the 80s. I do love the 80s. Well, then the Ectotron may or may not be for you. No, nah, probably not. It's <laughs> Whatever. It's one. I don't really care about toys, so I was like, all right, that's weird, but great. I'm sure someone will love it. Collectibles, my mistake. Zachary Levi, future Shazam himself. Yes. Spoke out and said that he was disappointed with his role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because he was in two Thor movies and didn't do much. Well, now he's, he was he's Shazam. In the regular Thor movie, it was played by a different actor whose name I don't remember. But he was Fandral in the second Thor movie. He had like one scene where he did something. And he's like, and in the third one, I didn't even get a line. <laughs> Which is true. They just killed they just him. They just killed him. Like, immediately. I thought that was hilarious. It though. was. The Warriors 3 did not last very long. But he's like, ah, oh, we could have had like a bunch of, you know, like fun buddy cop movies. Of Thor and the Warriors 4 all running around and instead I just died. Which I guess is valid. They're probably not going to bring him back. Because, side note, they were kind of boring in the movies. Even for as little as they did. Yeah. Yeah. What they? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what they did. <laughs> there was two fight scenes between three movies. That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. The beginning of Dark World where they're like cleaning up all the messes. Yeah, it's one of the funner scenes in that movie. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it would be more fun if they were just all running around having adventures. But Thor got more interesting friends when he joined the Avengers. Oh, yeah, because they all have better powers. (laughs) They're not all like kind of lame. Than just strong Viking. Yeah, strong Viking and wannabe Fabio. They're fun. Th- eh, that's not true. They're not even all fun in the books. One of them is fun in the books. Okay, I guess two. Two of them are fun in the books and two of them are boring and Zachary Levi was one of the boring ones. That's why he died. Fandral and Hogan. They're not bringing anything to the table. They're Not anymore. They're dead. <laughs> that too. That doesn't help anything. You know how nothing can be new anymore and it's all old? Yes. Speaking of Hulu, should have done this one sooner. Yeah, we, you didn't <laughs> blend them together properly, and that's fine. To be fair, I didn't write down Hulu as one of my notes for this. Okay, so. that's fair. Here's a series that just won't stop coming. Alien. Wow. Okay. I mean, there's still the, it's on, it's off again, it's back on. Neil Blomkamp, Alien 3 slash 5, but really just be 3. It would have like Sigourney Weaver back. And uh, what's his name? The guy who was also in Terminator, Michael Bean. Yes. They'd all be back, but that's been on and off again so many times. Now, rumor has it that Ridley Scott is developing two Alien series for Hulu. Why two? <sighs> I don't know. Why one? The The pitch sounded at least partially interesting. They said they would be dealing with different regions of the Alien lore, so you might not have like things crossing over. Just, you know, just do what the first movie did, just Haunted House in Space. If you that's pretty much, yeah. Jump scares. I guess, but I don't. I don't know. I mean, this series has lived on forever in comics. It's they still do a ton of Alien comics, but at the same time, like, what are you gonna <laughs> get? Like, what was the last time I enjoyed something from the Alien franchise? But the thing is, like, there's no what, what plot are you gonna have? Like, weekly you're gonna have a jump scare. Someone's gonna burst out of someone's chest. There's gonna be a lot of fire, and someone's gonna be a secret android, and the Wayland Corporation will be behind it. Yeah, and the alien will be hiding, and you think you killed it, but you didn't. And they suck it out of an airlock, and then another one shows up, and they take over the world, and then they don't. <laughs> Forgot all about Alien versus Predator. And then, then the Predator shows <laughs> the up. The second one. What a bad series. Alien versus Jason. Alien versus Freddy Krueger. Alien versus the mom at the store who's trying to get the last bottle of juice. I, I, I don't know if I'll see another one of these. Like, I don't know if they're going to do it because the last two movies didn't perform very well. No. I think I might be done. I think I'm all done with this franchise. I don't know if I'll go back. Prome- uh, Prometheus is not great alien covenant the trailers and all the promo stuff looked really great but then the movie itself wasn't i don't know i think i'm done with this one yeah you didn't see either of those did you i wasn't i'm not i've never really like the original alien yeah that was about it for me you never saw aliens no oh i think i did but i mean it's one of the best oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i saw aliens as well both of them and then the series falls off the rail immediately yes it's no good i mean except for those first two movies which are awesome here's a weird one let's move on to comics yes Oh, okay, let's do one more story about movies and then move on to comics. Okay. Gwyneth Paltrow is out of the MCU after Endgame. Okay. She says that is her swan song. So maybe Pepper dies. No, because we know that she doesn't because there's that check that she supposedly signed in Spider-Man Homecoming that uh, Happy's carrying around. We see it in the trailer. He has oh, a big, he has oh, a big novelty yeah, check yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and her name's on it as the signature. Maybe it's in memoriam, the Pepper Potts Foundation. <laughs> no, you can't sign a check. 
like that. Postmortem? No. Uh, maybe. That's someone's know. name. Maybe it's a digital edit to throw people off. No, I think Tony's probably just dead and one his story's done and hers is as well. Would be my guess. Really pushing for this Tony's dead side. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, probably he's dead. The ED dead. I mean, I've enjoyed her enough in these movies. I don't think she ever put in a bad performance. As a human being, she's a wacko. But her performances as Pepper Potts were never bad. No, not at all. But I'm not also going to be, you know, pining for like, oh man, where's the Pepper Potts scene? Gonna miss it, her. I'll be fine either way. Well, I mean, why have her if there's no Tony? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, exactly. Who cares, I guess. Now, comic book news. Here's a weird one. Star Wars, that's a series of things. Yes, we've talked about it's this. It's been a video game, a TV show, a couple of movies. Oh, um, did you see that the Star Wars trailers anticipated to drop in April? No. Oh, it is there. That was my news. Great. Drop. Thank you. Maybe. A, a, a rumor about a thing that's coming at some point. Yes. It's on its way. You can't deny that they'll have a trailer, though. There will be a trailer. They wouldn't even need a trailer, and people would still go to see that movie in droves. Yeah, that movie's going to do fine. It, that movie's going to make plenty of money. I know people were like, Star Wars is dead because Solo didn't do well. Yeah, I have a feeling when Episode Nine comes around, they'll be fine. Like, we, we're not going to see it because they didn't like The Last Jedi. <laughs> it sucked. Uh. <laughs> Look, I agree that Casino stuff was a little foot draggy. Canto but the, bright. But the rest of it, <laughs> I'm all about. Oh, yeah. I want to know more about the, the mop kid. I, yeah, why not? He's got... He's got the force. <laughs> if I had the force, I would do exactly what that kid did. Make menial labor just a little bit easier. Like, oh, I need the remote control? <laughs> the broom's over there. Get over here, broom. Oh. It's like, do you want to use that to fight against the oppressive government? Like, no. No, I just want the broom. I, I just don't. I don't want to have to get up as much. I just want to sweep without moving. <laughs> That's what. That's the next scene. It was Fantasia. He was just yeah, making the, the broom yeah, move the back and forth. Yeah, Apprentice. Yeah. It's like, I don't dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. What was it talking? Oh yeah, so Star Wars. Not only has Star Wars been around for a while, it's had multitudes of canons. Literally, by the time the second movie was out, they, there was already a split timeline. Laser cannons, blast cannons. I think it's called. Um, do you know about this? There was a book that then got adapted into a comic book series. I think it's called like, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Originally, yeah. George Lucas had done a. Um, I don't know who. Remember who wrote the script? Because I don't think it was him. But he had had a script put together for the second Star Wars movie because he didn't think they were going to be able to get Harrison Ford back. Ah. So the whole thing was just revolved around Luke and Leia. So instead, the script was turned into a book, which was like the first Star Wars novelization. And immediately, there have been... It's not canon, but for just a second it was <laughs> before Empire came out. Star Wars has had a bunch of different things that were canon and weren't canon. And it's, they've reset a few times. Oh, uh, we're, we're having some trouble here. The uh, the foam fell off Zach's new wall. It's like Tetris. Oh boy. So to let people kind of know what's going on, our our new studio collapsed in on itself, and then uh, as Zach tried to readhere some of the foam to the studio wall, the the whole foam came off. But I think we've we've jangled it back into place. Yeah, Star Wars has had many cannons, including one by Marvel Comics. Yes. Which is weird and bizarre and totally off the wall, but that thing hasn't been canon in a very long time. No. <laughs> Thank good. No. But ending at 107 issues, Star Wars is back for one extra issue. Star Wars number 108 has been announced. Why? Who knows? I can't imagine it'll be like to tie up loose ends. I mean, it might. Weirder things have happened. Yeah. But sure, why not? Th throw it back. Make it in the style of the old, if you can. Some that's sometimes the downside of like trying to return to an old story is you can't quite capture it with modern writing or you try and update it a little bit. It might work more with Star Wars because you can't be like, well, and then Luke was on his cell phone. <laughs> like if there wasn't a cell phone originally. So Star Wars is probably a little bit easier to do. Yeah. But it's just a weird novelty. I'm all about it. Uh, I mean, it'll be interesting. Kind of like a... People like that series because it's just so... Fan fiction-y and just you can just do so many, so many different things with it. Yeah, there were so many people for years who were invested in like other novelizations and Dark Horse stuff. And the, that universe got scrapped entirely. Oh, yeah. The Star Wars universe has been scrapped it so many times. So big and then so small and then so big again. Like they had to rein it in. Yeah, because I, I mean, there's been a lot of comics and novelizations in the last couple of years, or not novelizations, but novels, that the Star Wars universe is already massive and unwieldy yet again. I don't know. Don't get used to this one. It'll probably get scrapped again in another 10 years. 
It's usually what happens. Of course, Star yeah. Wars fans, they get invested in something, then bam, it's gone. Other sequel comics, Batman Ninja Turtles. Talk, the animated movie is coming, but also, I guess, the end of a trilogy that no one knew was a trilogy. Well, if there's only two, it can't be a trilogy. Well, yeah, Batman Ninja Turtles number three is coming from the same creative team who has done all the stuff before with... You mean Batman Ninja Turtles one and two? Yes. <laughs> the same creative team is back, plus, I guess, a little bit more Kevin Eastman this time. Interesting. Sure, why not? I didn't know it was a trilogy. I didn't know Kevin Eastman was still going to write Ninja Turtles. He does art stuff, and he does no, he yeah. does do writing. Oh, okay. He does he does more plotting than scripting, but yeah, he's still involved with everything. I don't know. Great. The other the first one is fun. So let's see how the third one does. I chose my words intentionally there. Yeah, second one not so much. First one's a lot of fun. All right, so every other one, <laughs> it could be like the Star we'll Wars. It could be like Star Wars, even uh, Star Trek, even numbers. Only it's odd numbers. Yeah, I mean, because Ninja Turtles 3s always work out well. Boy, now that Marvel, speaking of properties they have, they are really pushing Conan the Barbarian in a big way. We talked about this last week. We talked about one Conan thing. There's more Conan? There's always more Conan, or there is now. Does it involve Conan's maid? <laughs> no. Oh. The lamentation of the maids. The lament. They see them driven before you <laughs> with their feather dusters. Conan is joining the Avengers, or a team of the Avengers. How's that going to work? I don't know. Time travel, probably. But he is joining an Avengers team, a new book coming out to the Savage Avengers, with other members like Wolverine, and the Punisher, and Venom, and Elektra. What? Why the hell not? I guess, yeah. It's just, it's so wacky. In the Conan books, they have two of them out there right now. They're both great. I've been enjoying them a lot. But boy, they are really pushing Conan. I wonder where the movie rights lie. Because Marvel got back the licensing. I, I don't know. For comics, I have no idea where that stands movie wise someone will take another stab at conan eventually hopefully with arnold i'd like to see one more if he can do countless bad terminator movies he can come back and do one more conan movie king conan yes we can forget about conan the destroyer we can forget about him conan the maid destroyer <laughs> this is one of those things where i just get paranoid about the internet like we talked about conan last week and i was clicking around um Amazon Prime, and it's like, you might want to watch Conan. I was like, why? What do you know? I don't know. It's just one of those paranoid things oh. when you talk about things and just suddenly you have like targeted ads about the thing you were just talking about. I can never tell if I'm being paranoid or if it's real. I think you... It's probably... Oh, it's, 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 you're, you're being very much targeted. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Your just, phone knows. Uh, your phone, your laptop, when you say things, it's all connected. It's all in the cloud. There's a profile on you, Zach, and they know what you want. <laughs> it's just what Facebook is. If there was an in, wouldn't I be in on it? The yeah. Matrix is real, Zach. Mr. Bowen. See, Will Smith put out a video this week saying that like he did, in fact, turn down Neo, and he kind of explained it. I he, think it's okay said, that he did. Yeah, he said it was a bad pitch meeting, basically, and they were saying that like, Val Kilmer was going to be Morpheus, and it probably turned out better the way it did. Oh, it absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, it spiraled out of control. It had a few good years in there. Well, that was the only one. That's another one of those series where I'm just like, oh, there's one movie. End of series. It's fine. I don't need to watch the other ones ever again. A series being teased all week has been a little more information is put out. Tom Taylor is one of my favorite writers right now. He's really great. He's been teasing hashtag DC East or deceased. Oh, ooh, ooh. I can't believe that no one's ever called something deceased in the DC universe before. It's right there. It was on a platter that no one took. He did now. Yeah, I know, but I can't believe it took 80 years. Is it a bunch of DC comics with zombies? It actually is a zombie book. I got it right. <laughs> I'm smart. 600 million people in the world are going to be infected by zombies, and I guess the Justice League has to figure it out. It's going to be really gross, and a lot of people are going to die. Isn't that kind of like The Walking Dead? I don't. I mean, he's one of my favorite writers working right now, so yeah, I'm all about it. I don't have a lot of... I mean, there's not a lot of news out there. He also put out like hashtags like the whole thing with like dark side being the big bad of the dc universe that the, you just people say dark side is which is a line that was desperately missing from justice league for that universe that may or may not be continuing but instead of dark side is it just is like dark side was there have been some kind of gory images put out i don't know i think it'll, it looks fun but get on board for deceased or dc eased i like deceased 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 they're diseased and they're deceased De sizzled for shizzled was, yeah, whatever. I think that's it. That's the news. Sports reports? I guess we we can talk about... There's not a lot of sports reporting well, to do. I need to play a theme. Hang, oh, sorry. hang on. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. Bear tested. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40-yard line. It's time for another Jared Sports Report.
Good theme playing, Zach. I'm proud of you. My God. Yeah, not a whole lot of sports reports coming out of the uh, All-Star break. Kyrie did play in the All-Star game, which was... Uh, what? It was terrible. How dare he? Oh, people are not happy about it, but it is what it is. Why, why not? I didn't care. Eh, but he's been like, I need to rest up, and my body's been hurting. No, he I'm ha- going to go play hard in the All-Star game. And I mean, no one played hard in the All-Star game. It's a glorified Except scrimmage. for at the very end. I don't watch it. I turned it off. I got bored. Yeah, well, that's because the, the, at that point, they're like, oh, we got to get paid. Winning team gets more money than the losing team. No, yeah, I didn't care because he missed two games leading up before that, but he was day to day as it was. Yeah, uh, Brad Stevenson said if they had had a Friday game, he would have played that night. That's fair. But it wasn't a case of Kyrie was resting himself. There were legitimate doctors saying you can't play right now. So if you've been as invited, opposed to, in, as opposed to illegitimate doctors, well, as opposed to him just going, I need a rest day or something. Like he yeah. wasn't just sitting out. He and we saw it in the game. He, his knee got tweaked. Yeah. So yeah, people were all absolutely like, "How dare he?" It's like, "Why? If you're healthy, why not?" Mm. I don't care. But yeah, a lot of people were pissed. Understandably so. I don't think so. I think yeah. stupidly so. Whatever. The Bruins don't like now. They're second in the Atlantic Division. They're starting to make a push. So good for the Bruins. We don't ever give the Bruins any love. They're playing decent hockey right now, piecing it together. I haven't watched a game. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I know. But I, that's why I'm here to tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, these are the reports. Not much else, really, to talk about. Denny Hamlin won the Daytona 500. Yay, stock car racing. I saw something about a trade in baseball today. For some reason, it was in... No, I didn't really pay attention to much else of that. Yeah. That's it, really, for sports. I don't have much franchise tag seasons out in the NFL. Patriots are looking at a couple of different people. Trey Flowers, uh, Stephen Gostowski. We'll see. That's about it. I don't really have anything to contribute to sports reports today. Aren't the Red Sox going in for... Uh... Spring training. Yeah. That's it. Soonish. <laughs> it's not quite spring here. Oh, okay. No, I'll throw in one. Anthony Davis has opened up a little bit more about trades now that the Lakers didn't get him and Del Demps has been fired from the Pelicans. He said it was brought up about the Celtics. He's like, oh yeah, the Celtics are on my list of places I want to go. But he's like, but you know, the other 29 teams are on that list too. It's like, oh, so now that you didn't get the Lakers like you wanted, yeah, everyone's on your list. Yeah. Of course. I'll go anywhere. Oh, since I can't go there, I guess I'll go wherever. My list is expanded. Yeah. I bet he's going to land on the Celtics just because that wasn't one of his preferred teams. And his dad has also spoken out against him not wanting to have Anthony Davis go to the Celtics. And since he is get, trying to get out of his contract like 18 months early, I bet the Pelicans are going to send him exactly where he doesn't want to go. Well, they hold all the cards. Well, there's a reason that like, Kawhi's in Toronto. Not because he wanted to go there. Who wants to go to Toronto? We said no one. <laughs> Vince Carter. He's not there anymore. No, he's in Atlanta. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So Anthony Davis trade rumors can continue for another five months. All right. Until something is actually settled on. But at least his options are, you know, I'll go to 29 other teams. Just dear God, not the Pelicans. Sick of it. I don't want to go there. I don't think it ended up being true, but there were like rumors that the Pelicans weren't going to play him and the league said they were going to find them like $100,000 per game if they didn't. I think that was just a rumor, though. I don't think that was true. Because if he wants to get out of there, you might as well just try and not damage him before (laughs) he leaves. Yeah. Get the most up for your buck. Exactly. Don't don't hurt yourself. Make money. That's my motto. Is that it? Those are all your sports? That's all my sports. Okay, great. Those are all of the sports. From there, we're moving on to a Jared's Reading Corner. It's Jared's Reading Corner. Hey, you know where we're from? Maine. <laughs> you had to think about that. Well, I mean... You considered what you were going to say. I thought you were going to say Italy, and I'm from Pennsylvania. No? Okay. This week, we are talking The Life of Captain Marvel, a recent five-part series that came out, which, as many comics do not do, takes place in our backyard. Harpswell is far from our backyard. It's not that far. Far enough. It's like 45 minutes in main distance. That's our backyard. Yeah, no, certainly everything's <laughs> here. You can get there from here. Ah, oh, jeez. That wasn't even a good main accent. You're from here. <laughs> oh, probably because I already have a main accent. We just don't hear it. What are R's? I don't... A's. What's an A? Ka, ah. Can we talk about how in the beginning <laughs> yes. part of this book, they really try really hard with the main accent, and then they go away from it? I don't think it went away. It was just who was talking. Yeah, fair. This book is written by Margaret Stoll. The main penciler is Carlos Pacheco, with some other art and flashbacks being done by Margaret. Um, you want to take a stab at that? So- Savage? Oh, Savage. Okay. Savage. Sovage. <laughs> Sorry, it's, I hate pronouncing people's last names. I don't think it's just that it's the last name. I think it's name in general. Other artist flashbacks with Erica DeRusso and Marcio Menez. I probably mispronounced most of those. What this book is, as Carol Danvers has had a long, confusing, contradictory, and sometimes uncomfortable history. Yes. 
Uh, we'll get it. Maybe I'll deal with that one day. She has one of the worst character assassination story done of all time. It was then rectified, but still. It involves a rape and a baby and everyone being okay with it. It's not good. Wow. I'll, I'll do that another day. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's cheer this up, please. But this story is set up to be the definitive origin of Captain Marvel, to try and streamline everything and make it all make sense. And to a point, it does it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, since this is relatively new, and since the movie is coming out, I don't want to give away all of what that origin is. Do you think this kind of this this is like an or a reorigin? Yeah, yeah. The stuff revealed in here was not known before this, so we shouldn't really tell too much about no, it. No, I mean, well, at least not the end of it. Yeah, but yeah, this is this was set up as the definitive origin of Captain Marvel, and I'm curious if how much of this is going to cross over into the movie that's coming up. I think it, it, it will. I think there's definitely it has to, but it also. Yeah, it feels weird if Marvel put this out just for them there to be a different, like, big screen origin of the character. Yes. It was more in line with what came before. I don't know. I'll be curious to see how much there was intercommunication and what will happen. And if she's still from Maine. I hope so. Yeah, harps well. Yeah, woo! We're too poor to live there. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> We're barely, we can barely afford living where we live now. We, we don't got that harps well cash. No, that's like... That's like having like Burger King cash, or that's like having Quiznos cash as opposed to Burger King cash. Something that I really like about this book is, I mean, it opens up with very familiar landmarks. If you've been down there, uh, they start at Land's End. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty damn close. It's it's a place. It's a real thing. Although I will say that the back, the basketball court in the backyard, those are European basketball markings because the wing the lane gets wide. It's not American basketball. Uh, the artist is from Spain. I know we talked about this. Oh, that's funny. I didn't notice that. The main connection is a lot of fun, and I think it captures a lot of, especially like kind of like a summer main vibe. Certainly not the winter vibe. Because <laughs> down there, it's like, you know, everything's kind of free, and kids are outdoors and running around and having fun, and you do things in town compared to the winter where everyone's like, I'm never leaving my house, and I hate everything. <laughs> well, no, there's plenty of fun things to do in winter. You go ice fishing, smelting, skiing, snowmobiling, sledding, tubing, cross-country skiing, snowboarding. There's still Ice more people. You said a mo- c- couple of those a few times. You've now circled in on yourself. Snow blowing. <laughs> That's not an activity. Making snowmen. Going on luge rides. Tobogganing. For the most part, I I think it captures Harpswell pretty well, and it captures a lot of um, some landmarks from the area. Yeah, Maine in the summertime. And there's some fill-in locations. Like if you're from the Brunswick area, because Brunswick is in this without being named. They yes. Have, instead of Frosty's Donuts, they have Sugars. Yes. There was another one. What was it called? Getting ice cream from some place called the Dime. My guess would be Cody's. If I had to think of a ice cream place in Brunswick, Gelato Fiasco. But this would be before that was around. Oh, but Cody's has been around for a while. Yeah, could be Cody's because this would be like you know mid '90s when this was all happening, based on what Carol's age would be in for the flashbacks of her childhood. My guess would be Cody's. Okay, I could buy that. I'm t- I'm taking a stab there. I'm going to say it's Frosties and Cody's. Yes. The Frosties one has been confirmed. Well, I mean, yeah, Frosties is a donut staple. Well, I mean, I should say Sugars was confirmed to be Frosties. Yes. No, but I I thought the art was good. It was interesting. You know, for like, as I was reading it, I was like, huh, it's weird because it's a newer Captain Marvel book, but it like felt like an origin story, which I was like, it's kind of weird unless they're like re Carol Danvers. Yeah, and- that's what it is. I mean, her whole backstory is a mess. So it was kind of nice getting this out there. To straighten out some of said mess. Yeah. Also, I didn't know that she was dating Tony Stark. They're not dating. They're just friendly. Super friendly. I mean, no, they're they're just oh. talking. Oh, just just casually talk. That's yeah. How you how are your things going with you and that girl? Oh, we're just talking. Just talking. No, that's you. That's you who refuses to use any terminology. You're like, I don't know. We're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. Uh, we're, we've been hanging out for like 19 months, but you know, we're just hanging out. That's you. Okay, well, let's move on. Let's talk about Captain Marvel. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't you dare speak ill of the relationship language used in this. Okay, I won't. <laughs> um, I guess the quick gist of it without spoiling the end is her father passes away, so she has to return to her home in Maine. Yeah, and like uncovers some some potential skeletons in the closet and tries to... There, there are already skeletons that she knows about, like the fact that he was abusive. Well, I mean, okay, multiple skeletons, like other newer skeletons, plus... In his funeral, she refers to him as a good adversary. Dark. She crushes his tombstone with a fist. She's very strong. She also flies to the moon and punches it in this. She's very strong and can fly. <laughs> to the moon. Why not? She punched the moon, Zach. 
I mean, better than the main coastline. That's it's already rocky. She could have added to it. <laughs> keep that pretty. Yeah, <laughs> keep Maine green, baby. Woo! Do you want her punching Land's End? No, not it's really. It's a very nice location. Or that bridge going out to Harpswell. Oh yeah, I mean Harpswell itself is is quite beautiful. Well, no, the bridge that like, she flies under, like that's that's identical. real. Yeah, that's that's legit. Also, um, that page is in the store. Yes. Fun facts. In this book, which you can also buy at the store. You can, and you should, because the Captain Marvel movie has come out. And Fun facts. Those books are selling like hotcakes. The hottest of cakes. Uh, I thought, I, again, like I said, I like the art. I thought the story was interesting. We have a Cree cleaner in here. Yeah. That's, cause... that's kind of like, the Cree cleaner is supposed to be the villain, but there really isn't a real villain in this. It's just a... The villain is secrets. Yes. And the truth. Yeah, it was... Um, yeah, I, I don't the, know, the, uh, in, interesting twist ending. The villain is there to move the plot forward, but yeah, I mean, it's not... But it's not much of a villain. It's like a, a henchman. Yeah, because if you know the old Captain Marvel origin, she got her powers from Captain Marvel, who was a Kree warrior, and a thing blew up, and a mixing of an explosion, and him and her being all there gave her powers. Or did they? Well, you need to read Life of Captain Marvel to find out. Yeah, I think... One part I like about this book is Captain Marvel, for the most part, is a cosmic character and does big things all the time. Like, that's oh, kind yeah. of her deal. This was very She's out in space level. and she's zapping things with her lasers. This was very ground level. Yeah, and this is all focused around family and confronting your past and moving forward. And Carol has to do that on a lot of levels in this book. It's not just, my dad died. and That is just the start of my brother the drove house his of car. <laughs> my brother drove his car off the bridge and... Yeah, there is a house of cards that just all falls apart around here all at once. I must say, I did like when the Kree cleaner got to Earth and like ended up in that field, and the guy's like, sucks to be you, and then she punches his face in, steals his clothes <laughs> in his truck, and says, sucks to be you. I have some lobstermen who shop at the store, and they didn't like one part of this book, because Carol talks about like in her past, like they used to yeah. release lobsters from traps, and people are like, that is my livelihood, that is not okay, and it's illegal. Yeah, it's super, <laughs> super illegal. So I did some lobstermen who were like, no... Uh, the main artist, Carlos Pacheco, fun fact, not his first time drawing Maine. Good for him. About 10 years ago, I think it was in Action Comics, I don't remember the exact issue number, he drew Superman and Lois out on a date in Cape Nettick. Having lobster rolls, or crab cakes. No, it was lobster rolls. Lobster rolls. And they got like Superman's flying around in front of a lighthouse, it was very cool. So yeah, he's done Maine before. I like Maine. I like when Maine is featured. I mean, Superman doesn't make it up here very often. No, but when he does, he makes the most of his time. He's there for lobster rolls and lighthouses. People that summer in Maine. Superman. I mean, <laughs> Jonathan Frakes. John Travolta. Carol Danvers. Let's name other Johns that come up here. Mm. I'm out, actually. No, I think it's worth a read if you're, especially as it might be an interesting primer for Captain Marvel. I was, I'm thinking that this may have some bearing on the movie. It would make sense. It would kind of help us figure some of that out. I can see it, the, what happens in this uh, book. So I, if you will need a primer on Captain Marvel, why not read this? It feels like a safe jumping in point. Yeah. Th there's another one that we're going to do next week that I would also kind of put into that category of, here's a, a good introduction to the character. I would definitely rank this pretty high on um, a good modern telling of the character that's very accessible. I like accessible. Yeah. I mean, you walk in, you read it, you don't need to know a lot, and I don't think that it really throws any curveballs at you that are going to be hard to understand for new readers we're gonna do one next week which a lot of the movie is um supposedly heavily based around which isn't quite as new reader friendly as this so yeah i think if you're looking for a jumping on point this is probably the book to do it with i knew it and i haven't even read any other captain marvel it felt comfortable well you're gonna read some more next week i figured as much which yeah i mean the, the next one works really well too but I, there's a couple of moments where i'm just like what is this I don't, I don't know what's happening but just a couple only a couple yeah so i don't know life of captain marvel i recommend it if you're into the movie if you're into maine I am into Maine. Like, I don't know if I'm into Captain Marvel. I've only read this one story. But I love Maine. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's a lot of fun getting those connections because we get them so rarely. But it's not just rare. It's like it's not just like a small like one panel connection. It's a no, it's full, full book. book takes place in Maine. She couldn't fly an hour and 45 minutes north and buy some comics. Come on. No, no. She could go to punch the moon. Maybe she like but can't go to other small towns. Maybe you were closed. Ah, uh, no, it was a Sunday. <laughs> it was a Sunday. That's what she came by. That was actually a deleted scene. Or you were at, you were at a show. <laughs> yeah. All right. I guess I'll do it. I mean, I like it. It's a smaller, more personal story, which I don't think is a bad thing. Captain Marvel. It's nice seeing something like that with her because she is usually yeah. Because a lot of the time, I, I would imagine there's like it's all happening in like the vastness of space and all these fantastic things. And this is very down to earth, for lack of a better term. It's very street level, except when it's on the moon. Well, that's only one panel, and she punches it. <laughs> 
I Crater. guess from there, it's time to move on to letters to the editors. Yes. A lot of questions, number one. Damn few answers. Here's another one of your letters to the editors. Make it so. I like this one, because I don't know if there's a good answer. If you could reshoot a superhero movie with today's technology and with different directors, but you had to keep the same script, what movie would you want to see reshot? Because performance, direction, and technology can have a big difference on what a movie is. Some things are like unsalvageable, like Howard the Duck isn't salvageable as a movie. They just didn't understand the character. No. Something like, let's go really awful, like um, that Ninja Turtles Christmas special. Like Part of the charm of that is how terrible the effects are. Oh, yeah. And how you can see their sneakers. <laughs> Still, my favorite is one, one that was punching the animatronic head trying to get it to work. Yes. I don't know. That's a tough question. I have... I can think of two that could probably stand an update that would be interesting to see them that I don't think have to be stuck in their respective spots. Okay. I'm going to go with a more serious answer first. All right. Uh, 2003's Daredevil. Okay. I mean, Christ, 2003's The Hulk in there, too, and maybe trim down the script. Oh, God, that's long. Okay, I could buy those. But, I mean, Daredevil suffers from being... 2003 it's so 2003 it would you up, would you update the soundtrack to not be all new 100 percent. <laughs> step one less evanescence oh come on there's no said no one ever you know i thought about doing that last year just to see if anyone would notice i thought about just playing what's that song called like bring me to life or something yeah is that the name of it i thought about doing that on april fool's day is just playing that song and nothing else for the entire day on april 1st but like i will kill myself if i do that so i skipped that prank maybe your prank should just be to play like the daredevil soundtrack all day long Ah, you don't have to suffer through it eight times (laughs) but it's not that long of a soundtrack i think it is let me see how long it is i know it has two evanescent songs on it though Mm, well no three because it has a, a second cut of the slow song i think but that movie already has two cuts anyway. And people say, like, the director's cut is better. I mean, no, not really. They're both pretty awful. It's a hair better, but boy, is it still basically unwatchable. I mean, they have Daredevil's origin in there. He fights the Kingpin and Bullseye. And even though I do, the only thing I like of that movie is Colin Farrell as Bullseye. Just it's 74 <laughs> minutes long. Oh, no. Because Colin Farrell is just so... And it had four singles that were released. Off the wall. It was... It was related. It was uh, not really. It was rated by All Music two out of five stars. <laughs> I guess Michael Clark Doug, uh, Duncan was good too. But man, most of that movie is Let's see. rough. Maybe not yeah. have that playground fight on like a seesaw. Here are some of the bands that were involved in this: Fuel, The Calling, Saliva, <laughs> Seether, oh, God. Nickelback, Drowning Pool, Moby, Evanescence. <laughs> Moby's fine. <laughs> what do you got against Moby? Ubistank. Did you forget an H in there? It's, it's, the H is silent. It's Hoobastank. It's not Hoobastank. It's Hoobastank. Finger 11, 12 stones. I don't know that one. Oh, there you and go. And the rest of those I mostly have forgotten existed. What? Whew, that is a... Yeah, that's, that's a rough, rough, isn't it? That's a rough album. So I don't know. I think you could maybe rework that script. That could potentially be a passable movie. Maybe. I could buy that. I mean, I don't think every comic movie has to be serious, but maybe... I think even that movie trying to be serious is just so damn silly. It's accidentally silly. Yeah. I thought some of the effects were kind of kind of neat. They, they could have cleaned up with better technology, like when he has his vision, like his um, yeah sonic vision. Yeah, that's not terrible, but yeah, you could do that. Like, they did it, they only did it, like, in one scene in the Daredevil TV show, and I did not like the choice they went with. Comparatively, the movie did that better. It was like, he sees the world, but it's all on fire, and I was like, it's just we- no, it's weird. That was a weird choice. What about the original Superman? No. No? I don't think it needs it. That movie is perfect the way it is. No, but I mean, clean it up maybe a little bit. Some of the compositing, some of the effects. Or maybe that was just the way that the effects, like, they help with the movie. They don't take away from the storyline, I guess. Yeah, and there's even, I mean, the whole, what was the tagline of that poster was, you will believe a man can fly. Yes, They were proud of their effects. Well, I mean, for the time. And Christopher Reeves is just, he's too perfect for me to to want to reshoot that movie. Yeah, I guess I can see that. I'm just trying to think of like... Stay with me here on this one. All right. Get ready. Batman and Robin. I was starting to think reshoot about... Reshoot that sucker. With the same script? With the same script. Oh, no. Ugh. Because I think... I would rather see Batman Forever shot again than Batman and Robin. Because my whole... I mean, Batman and Robin is bananas crazy, but they also... 
tried to lean too hard into 1997 CGI and effects. And even though it's campy as all hell, they still try to make parts of it serious. I think just lean, because it's, it's, it's an episode of the 60s show, just lean into that. Make it campy, make it bananas, but also don't try and make it like 90s sleek and extreme. I think, I don't think it'd be a good movie, but you could, I think, make a better version of that movie, but still recast Arnold, because you ain't getting better than that no. on those puns. No, you're not. He is the highlight of that movie. I really am having a hard time thinking of of one. And also imagine casting someone in that, because George Clooney doesn't know what he's doing. He thinks he's in a halfway serious movie and doesn't feed into the camp at all versus Adam West knew what that show was oh, all yeah. about. He knew the show was a comedy. George Clooney didn't know he was in a comedy. He brought that version of the franchise to a screeching halt. I mean, that's got to be rough. If you're in a comedy and you don't know it, what are you going to do? That's that's the main fault there. Yeah. And I mean, then you get to recast Alicia Silverstone with anyone else. Maybe, I don't know, find a more tonally appropriate actress than Uma Thurman. At least what she chose to do there. Yeah. She knew she was in a comedy. Rubber lips. <laughs> but imagine Adam West delivering that line and it works. Oh, yeah. Don't leave home without it. Ka-ching! Oh, the bat card. Adam West could make that script work, baby. I'm trying. I cannot think of. You know what? The Green Hornet, the Seth Rogen Green Hornet. The technology isn't even that different, but yeah, that's a pretty unwatchable movie. Boy, that's generic. Yeah, I think it could. I saw it once when it came out, and yeah. I'm just trying to think of like comic movies, like yeah, maybe don't cast Seth Rogen. I mean, I know he was like in like shape the, for the, that movie. Like, with the provision of the script not changing, that's the hard part. That's why I think it's fun. That's why I liked this question. Oh, you know what would be fun? The Fantastic Four where they had to fight the Weatherman. You always say that. It's the Justice League one. Oh, Justice League. <laughs> Justice, the Justice League movie would be good. Or the or the first Fantastic Four. You could, I mean, you could reshoot that Justice League pilot because they were doing like the mockumentary TV thing before The Office made it a thing. Yeah. Because they were all talking to the cameras. Now that that's been done a million times, yeah, why not reshoot the Justice League pilot as the mockumentary TV thing, but without those terrible effects. Like maybe allow Green Lantern to have a ring versus just a backpack with a styrofoam suit or what about the actually how about the first green lantern movie that was basically i mean the technology hasn't really changed yeah but you could recast it shoot it a little better i mean we had a great green lantern movie in justice league (laughs) love those cameos best green lantern movie i've ever seen and it was in justice league one of the worst movies all for short time trying to think of something like it was in the 90s i mean some movies can't be saved Something like, not even like that Captain America movie we watched. Like, what are we going to do? Watch a movie where Captain America just keeps on stealing people's cars by pretending he's sick? Did that twice. Yes. Like, that's not being improved with reshoots or decapitating a woman at the end <laughs> and just walking away. Do you remember that? Just cuts off a woman's head with his shield. You're reshooting that isn't going to save that. I don't know. Maybe Ang Lee's Hulk. That movie is so boring. Yeah. And it tried to do all those weird things of like framing all the pages like it was a comic book page. So there are like four different panels happening all at once. And it looks awful and it's really boring. I bet you could tighten that up. I don't know if you could make it better with the same script. I mean, at least you had Nick Nolte being a weirdo. Mm. That's the only good part of that movie. It's Nick Nolte just being a weirdo. He does that well. Yeah. I really can't think of any. I think your Daredevil one is spot on. Boy, that's 2003. That is very spot on. That is Your Daredevil one is that is on point. I like the Batman one better, but the Daredevil one is probably more realistic. That's more realistic. You can't change any of the Spider-Mans. Those were good. No, I think, and I mean, Daredevil is a prime example of it. I hate it when you put in music of the time in a movie. It dates it immediately. Yes. Like, I'm fine with, like, if you have a soundtrack of, like, you're working in, like, past songs or whatever, you're doing orchestral stuff, but the second you put in, like, a pop song of the time, that movie is old by the time it comes out on home video. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm never a fan of putting I know what I'm getting you for your birthday. Evanescence. I'm getting you the, I'm going to find the Daredevil soundtrack and give it to you. Well, you have another 12 months to wait. You couldn't pick a further time away from my birthday. It, well, it's not that far away. It'd be a belated birthday. No. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's it unless you can come up with another one. I can't. I'm like, I'm looking and I'm I'm trying to rack my brain here and I can't do it. I cannot do it. I almost want to say like the second X-Men movie, X2. The first one was pretty boring. It's terrible pacing. Yeah, but I mean, that's some of that script stuff. I think you have to leave Patrick Stewart as Professor X though. Oh yeah. He, I mean, he's the best. He's perfect. And Ian McKellen as Magneto. I don't know. I think you hit. The, I think your Daredevil one was. Let's reshoot Daredevil. Let's All do right. it today. Same script on it right now. I'm aligning. I'm lining things up. <laughs> Colin Farrell can come back or not. 
but only if he promises to be more or far less crazy. He really went full nuts in that. Yes, he did. And it's... Bullseye. Ca- he made me miss. <laughs> when he says bullseye, points to his forehead where there's a bullseye. Does it like seven times, just nods, going like, yeah, yeah, I'm bullseye, bullseye. bullseye. God, yeah. It's the, oh my God, it's insane. All right, I guess that's it for this week. That's all I had. Reshoot Daredevil. Or if, you've learned or nothing, if you learn nothing else about us, we're going to reshoot Daredevil. I'll, I'll get a few million together and buy oh the boy. rights. Work on it. Start fundraising. Crowdsource that shit. Kick started to buy the How about this? Daredevil you can Patreon it. From Disney. Go, go to patreon.com slash editors note comics. One dollar a month gets you the show a day early and also gets you podcast exclusive podcasts from Zach. Patreon exclusive casts. Yeah, two are out next week. Two. Wow. Two on the same day. Put that dollar out there and get yourself more Zach for a dollar. Don't ugh, yourself. Don't sell yourself <laughs> short. More Zach for a dollar. You can also go to the store, 210 Water Street in Hollowell. No sales going on. The birthday sale is over, but that's it. Yeah, come buy stuff. Yeah. You need something to read during the winter because no one wants to leave their house in Maine. Yeah. Zach will deliver to you. I won't. I mean, if you want to go ice fishing, instead of just ignoring your family and getting drunk, maybe read a comic while you're ice fishing and doing those other two things. Yeah, drink, comic, and ice fish all at once. Congratulations to Sound Guy on his new comic book box. Huh? Sound Guy bought a new comic book box. You have to look at it. Oh, from it, me? Uh, Well, no, I think it was just in general. Uh, just check it out later. It's it's a it's a large comic book box. Okay, great. It's very large. Um, you're on Twitter at Junior Rich. We'll be back next week to continue with Captain Marvel talk to prep you as much as we can to go into this movie. Yay! Maybe read this book, Life of Captain Marvel, if you want to find out her origin. But we'll be back next week for more Captain Marvel and my origin. Not really. You were born. Now you're here. Yep, that was pretty much it. Something else happened in thirty years. I don't know. All right, we'll see you Let's next hope week. So, bye.